Hey, what's going on guys? It's Apollo Athletics. You guys seem to really like it when I talk about bodybuilding and genetics, so today we're going to be doing just that. <laughs> muscle bellies have to do with the way the muscle inserts and the way it looks. Some people have larger or smaller tendons which make the muscle look different. The bicep is usually the go-to example. Some people have a very long bicep tendon which makes their bicep muscle look a lot shorter. It makes them look like they have some sort of baseball on their arm. They can fit like three figures in between their tendon and their muscle. Some people, like myself, have a very full bicep. I can barely fit one finger in my arm. Yeah, barely fit one finger in there. This one's a bit interesting because it's not exactly clear which one is better. People usually say the fuller the bicep, the better, but in my experience, the bicep peak isn't as pronounced when it's really full. But on the contrary, when your bicep is very full, you have a more 3D look to your bicep. So if you want to do like a most muscular pose, then your bicep might look better if it's really full because it'll look, obviously just be more full. But from the front, having a short bicep peak will make it very, you know, very peaky and a very, like a very mountainous bicep. To demonstrate my point, just look at the biceps of Phil Heath and Kai Green. Kai Green's bicep is very full because the tendon is very long. Phil Heath has a very long bicep, but it doesn't really have a much of a peak. The ideal best case scenario is that you have a full and peaky bicep. But that's very hard to achieve. Just look at people like Sergio Oliva. He has a very full bicep, but not a very good peak. Something in between, I think, is usually the best. So this is where you have your Lee Priest and your Arnold Schwarzeneggers. Some people, like Larry Scott, have the best of both worlds, where they have a very full bicep that's also very peaky. Okay, moving on to calves, this one's pretty simple. The lower your calf insertion, the better. It just shows more of the muscle and allows more of the muscle to bulge out. As for the back insertions, usually the lower the better, but I have found that there might be some exceptions. Some people argue that a higher lat insertion allows the V taper from the front to be more pronounced. Although I'm not sure how true this is, someone like Brion Ainsley, a classic physique competitor or ex-classic physique competitor, I think he's doing 212 now, he has very low lat insertions, but he also has a very good V taper. But also, Chris Bumstead has like the best V taper, and he has relatively high lat insertions from at least what I've, the images I've been seeing. So maybe there is truth to having higher lat insertions being better for the front V taper sort of pose. I'm not sure. I think that this one might just depend on a lot of other things that might not just be the specific lat insertions. But I do feel comfortable saying that generally speaking, the lower the lat insertion, the better. Abs is also kind of easy. You want symmetrical, blocky abs. So you don't want like curved abs that like uh, don't look like soap bars. They're, they're, not, they're not like squares on your body. They're more like, uh, like waves on your body. You don't want that, that isn't as, as aesthetic. And you don't want uneven abs. So you don't want one abs up here, one ab up here, one ab down here, one ab down here, one ab down here. You want them to be like right next to each other. A very good example of this, in my opinion, is Ulysses Jr. Some people I've noticed also have more blocky obliques and that's not ideal for bodybuilding either. You want, of course, very cut obliques, but you want them to be very, like relatively small. Next, we're gonna talk about chest, and this one has some speculation, so bear with me. First of all, the fuller the chest, the better. There isn't any ambiguity with this one. Someone like Terry Crews has a huge gap between his chests, but Arnold Schwarzenegger has no gap between his chest. And Arnold Schwarzenegger has probably the best chest in bodybuilding history, and Terry Crews has a comparatively mediocre chest. My speculation now is in how people's chests tend to protrude out of their, their body. I've noticed that some people, for whatever reason, despite the fact that you would think that they have a very big chest, they have a kind of small chest. Like, Athlete Next is a very flat chest for whatever reason. Whereas you can get a random gym bro who just started lifting, like, last year, and they have a chest that already protrudes from their body. Like, Bikel Kabai has a very protruding chest, despite the fact that um, he's been lifting for, at, this, at the moment of the, this picture, he's lifting for a very short amount of time. Whereas Athlete Next has been lifting for, like, at least 10 years being very conservative 10 years. His chest just isn't very inclined to jut out for whatever reason. And yeah, that'll be it for the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you all next time. Peace.